Hello and welcome to Perspective, the action-packed youth debate show. Today we have our second semi-final of this competition. So we have two very, very experienced teams here in the studio today who are ready to battle it out for their place in the Perspective Grand Final and I'm also joined by my panel of three judges. So without further ado, let me introduce the judges. So closest to me, we have David. He served in the British Army and later in the Sultan of Oman's Air Force. He trained as a physiotherapist and worked in the NHS for 20 years and he's currently working as a family support worker with a local children's centre. He likes reading and surfing the net and enjoys watching natural history and current affairs programmes. So David, can I ask you what are you looking for today in the winning team of this semi-final? Well, I haven't heard this subject debated for uh, quite a long time. And so what I'm looking for is some uh, fresh ideas, uh, especially from the perspective of the youth, because I think that will be uh, really, hopefully, really informative. Thank you very much, David, for your expectations from the winning team. So contestants, make sure you take note of what David has said. Our next judge in the middle is Swiber. She's 20. Uh, she's had done A-levels in drama, sociology and philosophy and she's pursuing a career in acting. So Swaiba, let me ask you the same question. What are you looking for today in the winning team? Uh, I'm looking for everyone to really listen because a lot of the times um, your response is very clearly in the other team's argument and so if you, you know, bounce off of that, I think that will do some good. Thank you very much, Swaiba. And finally, on my far side, we have Mahmoud. He supports Arsenal. Uh, he's done a uh, undergrad and masters in development and economics from the London School of Economics. Um, he's interested in Middle Eastern politics and Islamic history, and he works for a global health consultancy in the city. So, Mahmoud, what are you looking for today in the winning team? Um, so, as David said, this is a, a new topic that we haven't. Uh, discussed before and it's going to be very interesting considering the late, uh, recent events in the news. Uh, so I'm just looking for the teams to kind of, uh, like Swaiba said, listen to each other and try and kind of pinpoint any weaknesses in the other team's arguments. Okay, thank you very much to the judges. Now I'm going to come over to the contestants and I'm going to introduce them. So today we have uh, Freedom Fighters who are debating for today's topic and we have the smart hallows who are going against today's topic so i'm going to come over to the smart hallows and i want you guys to introduce yourselves so what i'm going to do is i'm going to ask each of you to pick up the mic and give us your name your age and one of your hobbies so can i ask you to start please and then just pass the mic on to the next person um i'm ikra and i'm and i'm 11 and i like reading i'm adib i'm 12 and i like football I'm Moaz, I'm 10, um, and I support my United. Okay, thank you very much, Smart Hallows. Now coming over to Freedom Fighters, can I ask you guys to do the same? My name is Abu Saeed, I am 16 years old, and I am a police cadet. My name is Namira Ahmed, and I'm 17, and I like debate. My name is Nadira, and I'm 15, and one thing that I like is product design. Okay, thank you very much Freedom Fighters. So we have a very uh, varied set <coughs> of contestants here today from someone who is a police cadet to someone who supports Manchester United. Okay, so <laughs> now without further ado, I'm going to introduce today's topic. So today's motion is based around the statement of police should be allowed to carry weapons. Now, obviously in recent years uh, many events in america and the uk in the past couple of years have raised many questions surrounding this idea so we're going to debate it today on perspective so like i said before we have smart hallows who are against today's statement and we have the freedom fighters who today are debating for today's statement so now we're going to enter the first phase of today's program which is the speech round where each contestant is going to give a short one to two minute speech just outlining a few of their points and ideas surrounding their topic. So they're going to be wanting to try and win the judges over with some very strong points and a very well organised speech and also trying to make sure that you keep within the time frame. So I'm going to come over to Freedom Fighters first. Can I ask uh, each of you to pick up the mic, give your short speech and then pass it on to the next person. I strongly believe that the police force should be armed. Everyday police officers safeguard our communities, deterring crime, so that as a society we are protected. 
these officers put their lives on the line and sometimes that life is taken, taken away from them. It has been stated by the Metropolitan Police that a total of 1,600 police officers have been killed in the line of duty, many fallen victim to attacks such as knife crime and gun crime. This is down to the inability of these officers to defend themselves against people that possess such weapons. Thank you very much, Abu Saeed. Next. Your job is to protect the public. How can you do that if you cannot first protect yourself? I've done my research and it turned out the police officers are trained to get behind a wall and call for backup during dangerous situations and they have body armour just in case they get shot. This is disrespectful. It shows a lack of trust and disrespect for our officers. They signed up to protect people knowing that they're putting their life at risk. But what's the point? Because they are trained to do exactly what the public would do. Thank you very much, Samira, for a very passionate speech. Fanny Nadira? Um, well, one thing I would like to talk about is why do people think guns, or p police having guns, cause more deaths rather than reducing them? Now, I think that lots of people do think of the American system where policemen do have guns, but also the public do. And one of the main uh, types of bullets that they do use is the 9mm hollow point bullet, and that's made out of lead. And the way it works is that it, it makes the fragments within the bullet actually spread out and that causes um, more wound channels and that uh, means more uh, blood loss is happening to the person that is um, getting hit. So a result that I think that could be a solution to this is by using a different type of bullet called rubber bullets. And what that does is, well first, it's, it's much more safe. Uh, I mean, the highest damage that you could do is bone fracture, which is obviously, uh, you can be healed. Um, so I think that uh, rubber bullets should be a, n a new option because obviously technology is advancing. We know more about guns and bullets and how to make sure we are protected. An example is when um, the Metropolitan Police announced that they will be using rubber bullets against the uh, attacks from Northern Ireland in 1970s because of the terrorist attacks that were happening there. So I do think that there are alternatives so that, um, the police in this country can be using uh, weapons. Thank you very much Nadira for your very informative speech and thank you very much to Freedom Fighters for giving us your ideas there. Now I'm going to come over to the smart hellos who are against today's statement. Can I ask you guys to do the same? Just give your short one to two minute speeches and make sure you pass it on to each person in your team. I will be arguing against police carrying weapons for many reasons. Firstly, I, um, the average cost on a, a decent gun is around 200 to 350 pounds and to provide every police officer with that including ammo and the training will cost a lot just for one imagine what that would be for every other officer secondly i believe that police don't always know when to shoot the right person therefore if they shoot someone by accident they they could be huge fines to pay Finally, if we didn't provide police with guns, with, with all that money you could buy better security and other stuff. Would you rather spend all of that money on guns that police can not even know to use properly and waste it or buy better security to protect all of the innocent people in the world? Due to recent terror attacks, people have been questioning that why aren't all police carrying arms? People may also ask why some police don't even carry a taser. Well, I think police should not be allowed to carry guns. Now, let me explain. Firstly, police have not always been trained to carry arms. And when police have been put in a situation where they need arms to stop a criminal, sometimes they make, make mistakes. To err is human. We all make mistakes. Police is not an exception. But one mistake, one bullet, will not only take the life of one person, it will destroy his or her entire family. Just two months ago, on the 27th of September, a police officer was chasing a man on the motorway M5 and opened fire at his car to stop the car, from, to stop the car running. But later, police confessed that he killed the person by mistake. A life could be saved if he did not have any guns with, with him. Another point is that arms carrying police can abuse their power, scare and threaten civilians. Some police can use their authority as weapons as a means of robbery, kidnapping and many different types of crimes. Arms give them extra power which can violate the rule of law. Th uh, as a civilian myself, I would be scared if people would have, if police would have guns. 
The gun would create an atmosphere of fear. There are about three police on every street. If they all carry weapons, they will scare the community. In a free, fair and domestic society, people should obey the rule of law from their heart, not because of any fear. On the streets, when I see any police carrying arms and they approach towards me, I don't feel comfortable. If they walk without guns, people like me will feel comfortable to seek help from them. This fear will not make a good community. That is why I believe police should not be allowed to carry weapons. Just remember, police are nothing but friends. Thank you very much indeed for a very, very strong speech there. Finally, from Smart Hallows, Ikra. A survey of 47,000 328 police federation members found 82% did not want officers to be armed on duty. Personally, I do not want police to be armed as they are highly trained and have learnt to deal with situations without them throughout their years of training. A police officer serving in South England was badly injured in an assault and said a gun would not have helped in the situation. So if a police officer said a gun would not have helped in the situation, why should police have one? Thank you very much, Ikra, and thank you very much, Smart Hallows, for your speeches there. So we've heard uh, some very good points coming from both teams in this opening part of the debate. We, uh, so we had Freedom Fighters uh, who were uh, for today's topic and Smart Hallows who were against. And I'm sure that the judges have been impressed with what they've heard so far. So after the break, which is coming in just a bit, we're going to head over into the second phase of today's programme which is the actual debating round where both teams will go head to head and sort of act actually debate against each other and how it's going to work is one team is going to come with a starting point and then the other team will be expected to counter and they're going to go back and forth until I call an end to that phase of debate and then I ask the other team to come with their opening statement. So both teams look to be loaded up with a lot of points to use in that round so make sure you stay tuned and you can catch us after this very very short break. <laughs> 